Hey guys, how's it going? Kuprain here. Today I want to do the reveal of the remaining cards in the Journey to Ungoro expansion. It's a bit of a late video because they just did all the reveals and all that, and it's like 70 some cards total. Some of them, it's not like 70 card cards, but some of them are quests that spawn other cards and stuff. It's a lot of stuff to go through. Get well seated and grab a snack. It's going to be a pretty good video, and it really goes into how the whole expansion will shape up. To kick it off, I wanted to make a specific order here. I wanted to go through the remaining quest cards just so we can get some context on the remaining of the cards. So to kick it off, I have the new warrior quest. As a reminder, quests start in your opening hand unless you choose to mulligan them away in that stage of the game. So it's pretty reliable to have this in your opening hand. Quest play seven taunt minions and the reward is soul for us. So before we get to what the reward is, the cost. So how how likely are you to play seven taunt minions? This is not summon seven taunt. This is you have to play them from your hand. So you have to play seven cards, and all of those seven cards need to have taunt before they hit the board. So that's kind of hard to do. I mean, you're, you're really looking at like the earliest time to play this on like turn eight, you're going to get the reward. So it's a bit tricky. It's definitely a, a very slow quest to achieve. The reward, the weapon, Sulphurus, uh, three cost, four, two weapon, and the battle cry replaces your hero power with deal eight damage to a random enemy. Now, this might not look that game winning compared to some of the other quests, but you have to keep in mind that um, the quest kind of covers a lot of the meta. So, if you're playing that warrior quest, your deck is just full of taunt minions. If you're playing a warrior and you have armor up and your deck is full of taunt minions, you're kind of playing an anti-aggro deck, right? And then if you complete your quest, you're suddenly playing just a more well-rounded anti-control deck as well. So it's pretty good. Um, I think if you're playing against aggro, you just don't play Sulphurus until you can kill your opponent. It's 12 bursts potentially, it's quite a lot. And if you're playing against control, you play this as fast as possible and try to gain a control advantage in the game. So it just covers a lot of the meta in one card, and I imagine it's a very consistent card. So I imagine we're going to see a lot of this card. We have the Druid Quest Jungle Giants. Uh, summon five minions with five more attacks. So it's only five minions and it's summon, not play. And the reason that is significant, I believe, is because uh, Battle Cry buffs trigger generally, and I believe in the cases I'm about to uh, give an example of, trigger before the minion comes into play. So if you play like a 2 2 guy and it has adapt and you get like the three attack adapt and he comes to play as a 5 2, I believe that'll count towards this card, making this quest very very easy to uh, complete yeah like really easy and you'll see some of the new druid cards after this really enforce just how easy it is to complete this quest so maybe we won't have just a jade druid meta after all so it might be interesting the reward of course barnabas yeah that card that card is a little good uh, five cost eight eight beast and the battle cry reduces the cost of your minions in your deck to zero. Wow. Mage Quest, open the way gate. This is the one card that the devs said they feared the most when I talked to them about the scary cards in the expansion. So cast six spells that didn't start in your deck. Um, there's a lot of cards that were revealed that help do this, but cards like Babbling Book are a good example. Uh, things of that sort. Um, in Mainsters of Gadget, there are a lot of cards from the uh, uh, Cabals that spawn like potions and stuff in your hand, or grab cards from like priests and stuff. All those would count. Uh, it's really not that hard to complete this quest. Not as hard as it might seem on first glance, at least. And the reward is Time Warp. Again, that card is a little good. Uh, you can play like a lot of Tempo Giants, or you can just have like a two turn win condition, or you could just like have a bunch of extra mana and just kill your opponent that way. Pretty flexible card and again, it's a little good. As far as the other cards, uh, let's kick it off here. Darkhorn, Hatchling, Taunt Guy, Warrior, five cost, three six, it's a beast. And when it dies, you shuffle a six nine uh, Darkhorn with Taunt in your deck. I don't think that has any special abilities and I think that costs roughly what you'd expect, like eight mana or something like that. But I don't, we don't know what a Darkhorn is, just I wouldn't I wouldn't think it's something too, too crazy. The card is okay. 
Giant Wasp. This card is certainly going to have its impact in Arena. 3 cost 2-2 two, two Beast, Stealth and Poisonous. So it has the on kill uh, of damage on damage kills anything mechanic. Uh, and it's got Stealth. That's a pretty devastating combo. Similar to Patient Assassin. Patient Assassin dies to 1 damage very easily. 2 damage Stealth is a lot, lot harder to kill, particularly for most Arena decks. So I think this card is actually exceptionally strong in Arena. And maybe even Constructed. We'll see. Dynomancy. So it's a hunter spell. Your hero power becomes give a beast plus two plus two. That's pretty good. So if you compare it to like the priest one, it's a little bit more limiting, but of course you would design your deck around it, so it's probably not that limiting. And uh, instead of healing something for two, you give it two health, so it's more proactive than the priest hero power, and you get two attack as well. So this card is really, really good. Um, now, it, I don't think it's like shadow form, so if you have two of them, it wouldn't give a beast like plus three, plus three, or any more than plus two, plus two. But if you do draw your second one, you can perhaps just cycle a double hero power. And again, that's just fine. I don't think that'll be a problem. I think uh, this card is very strong, but as I mentioned with some of the other revealed hunter cards, um, the new hunter cards just kind of seem to blow up the class in a whole bunch of different directions. So while I'm sure one or maybe a couple of those directions will work out in the meta, certainly they won't all work out. But how do I know if Dynamancy is going to be the new hunter deck or like the quest hunter deck or like the death rattle hunter deck or just like an aggro we don't know we don't know which one's going to work certainly not all of them are going to work but this is a really powerful card and uh, we should uh, take a careful look at this card every time there's new cards added in future expansions and all the rest grievous bite two cost deal two damage to a minion and one damage to adjacent ones really powerful card uh very powerful when i uh, use with spell damage but again that's another 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 hunter deck so I don't know. Uh, is it good enough to just make in, make it in all the hunter lists? Probably not. Maybe just a few of them. Jeweled Macaw, one cost, one one beast, battle cry, add a random beast to your hand. This is an extraordinarily powerful card. You have to keep in mind that when people were playing Web Spinner, Web Spinner was literally in every single hunter deck and one of the best arena cards you could possibly draft at the time. This is actually better than that because um, the death rattle effect of the Web Spinner um, was a bit limiting. You could get it silenced, you could get it like Potion of Madness or something. Um, sometimes you would just top deck web spinner and that would be really bad because you'd have a very slow turn and the next turn you might get a big beast but you can't play both that and the card just drew this goes around all of that and it's a one cost and it's a beast and it's a hunter card which also works with the hunter quest so uh what i'm saying is this is one of the best cards in the set even though it might not look like much stonehill defender three cost one four taunt <laughs> battle cry discover a taunt me <laughs> Uh, that's a good card, but like, it really just goes to show every expansion, the Silverback Patriarch just becomes that much shittier, right? It's crazy. Uh, Ornery, Direhorn, 6 cost, 5-5, five, five, Taunt, Warrior card, it's a beast, don't think it being a beast matters very much. Battlecry, Adapt, uh, you can get like 3 health on it, um, get plus 1, plus 1 on it, 6 for 6, 6 Taunt, pretty good, pretty good. Generally, very powerful effect, I think. Pretty powerful card. Uh, I like this one a lot. Two cost, one two beast, but it's got taunt and poisonous, and it's in the early game, so it can battle for the two drop spot. You, if, you have to think about the poisonous keyword as like it just has an unlimited amount of attack when it comes to board control. So obviously, a card like this you wouldn't play it too much in like aggro decks. Maybe you would in some zoo decks. I think it might be like zoo worthy, but in like a control deck, it's basically. A two health taunt with unlimited attack. So against another control deck, it could be like a 12-2 taunt for two. So you know, like it, it could just be a lot. It kill anything. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna see quite a bit of this card, even though it might not look like much. Primordial Drake, a uh, really expensive dragon, uh, one, one of the very few new dragons in the set. Uh, it's got taunt, it's got a lot of health, and the battle cry is kind of like a board clear. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, probably the card closest to this one would be Abyssal Enforcer. Abyssal Enforcer does three to everything, but it also does three to your own face, which is kind of bad because Warlock really values its own health total to uh, continue going in the game, I suppose. Uh, so two damage is a lot worse than three damage. Uh, eight mana is worse than seven mana, 
but the stats are really, really good, and it's got taunt, and it doesn't damage yourself. It's neutral, so it has more potential to fit in any given deck. So uh, it's an extremely high potential card. Tar Lord. Um, the Tar guys, we've seen a few. There's going to be a few more today. This is a warrior-only Tar guy. All the Tar guys start with one attack, and they have additional attack points on the opponent's turn, and they all have Taunt, and they're all elementals. So on your opponent's turn, this is a 7-cost 5-11 Taunt. Good luck, Agra decks. I think. Wow, that is really powerful. But, um, yeah, you're still going to need some punch, and... My concern is, like, against other control decks, if this doesn't pack a punch or if I'm under... Like, if you're playing this against, like, a combo deck, they're just going to ignore it. It's like a seven-cost thing does one damage, right? So just the, the pressure value is so low. I don't know. I like it. I like these type of cards a lot, but I don't think, as crazy powerful as it looks, I don't think it's just all-around powerful. It's very powerful in a specific niche, and I think those kind of cards are very good. Binding Heal, one cost priest card, restore five health to a minion and to your hero. That's a lot. This is a really good card. Elder Longneck, three cost five one Druid Beast. It's got the five attack in the three slot. That's really powerful for the quest. And Battlecraft, you're holding a minion with five more attack, which you probably would if you're playing this card. You're also playing the quest. That's kind of the point of your deck. Then you adapt. If you adapt, you can get uh, stealth. You can live the rager dream, or you can get like three health. You can get plus one, plus one. Um, I think it's overall a pretty good card. I'm not so sure it's good enough to play in uh, a druid deck that doesn't run the quest, uh, but at least in arena, it's going to be pretty powerful, so we'll see. Free from Amber. Holy cow, is this card insane. Uh, eight cost priest spell, discover a minion that cost eight or more, and then you summon it. So, um, that's really powerful. Uh, that's really powerful because there are, like, about half the cards that cost eight or more are really powerful. And if you're given three choices of different ones, you're probably going to get one that's really, really good, particularly in any given situation. And it's a spell, and you might actually be able to tempo out. So you can play, like, a 10 drop on turn eight. So the potential for this card is really high. Um, I don't know if it'll really work in a priest deck because priest quest doesn't really work with this card and will we really see just general control priest thing constructed i'd wager that's pretty unlikely with the combo nature of the quest that we've seen so far but uh, in arena this is going to be a nightmare holy cow radiant elemental two cost two three priest elemental your spells cost one less uh seems like a pretty powerful card but we know from sorcerer apprentice that uh it's going to find a way to sneak itself into a lot of very dirty tempo decks and very very crushing combo decks so this is certainly a card to watch out for and you can start using your imagination how you manipulate a lot of different factors uh it's also a pretty good priest to drop so uh, just it being that is going to make Priests uh, quite a lot better in Arena because uh, that is one thing they've been lacking forever. Shell Shifter, uh, Druid card, four cost. That's either a 5-3 with Stealth or a 3-5 with Taunt. Uh, that's extremely powerful. Um, is it like Druid the Claw powerful? Kind of. Um, the stealth is obviously worse than the charge, but it has higher potential and it works the druid quest And if you really need it you play it in taunt mode, so uh, I think it's gonna see play in the quest druid uh, But other than that mm, I would say probably I think I think it is good enough But it's tough right like if you're playing jades You can't really afford to play cards like these if you're playing combos. I don't know if you can afford to play cards like these It's tough. We'll have to see Priest Legendary, Lyra the Sun Shard, 5 cost 3, 5 elemental. When you cast a spell, add a random priest spell to your hand. So it's kind of like a permanent lock and lock and load when this is on the board. We know that's a pretty powerful effect. That's kind of like a deck-defining effect. But that was a deck-defining effect like a year ago. I don't know if the power level, uh, because you've seen some of the cards revealed today, power level of this set is really high. I don't know if that old level of power is good enough to play in the new Hearthstone post Journey to Ungoro. And uh, with that, we really will just have to see how the decks flow and how the meta shapes itself. Uh, until then, you really, you cannot evaluate a card like this. 
Giant Anaconda, uh, seven cost, five, three beast. So that's pretty terrible. Um, Death Rattle summons a minion from your hand with five more attack. And that can be insane. You can summon like a, the new legendary, a 12, 12 that can't be targeted or something like that. Yeah, yeah like that's actually pretty good. Um, it's just that there's a lot of high impact uh, minions that are very vulnerable to silence. Um, and yeah, or, or like transform removal. And this is certainly one of them. Uh, if you play this and you get like transform removed, uh, I guess it's, I guess it's just like losing a seven drop to transform removal, which is not too bad. Yeah, it might be good. It might be really good. We'll really have to experiment with a card like this. Tertullian Forager, 2 cost, 2-2, two, two. Valkyrie at a random minion with 5 more attack to your hand. Uh, that's obviously uh, pretty damn insane, and we'll probably see a lot of play in those quest decks, as well as uh, really propelling Druids up a lot in Arena. Moving on, Earthern Scales. Uh, this card is really exciting for the control-oriented Druids. Uh, it's a 1 cost buff, plus 1, plus 1, uh, but you also gain a ton of armor potentially. So if you have like a really big minion, like an 8-8 or something, uh, you can get 9 armor, and it's a buff, and it costs 1. So it's pretty big. Uh, Druid has had some pretty powerful heals, but most of those have been fairly one-dimensional or far too slow, and this seems like it kind of beats those out, and healing has been really important in uh, control and combo decks, and... Druid kind of has those elements going for it. Um, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the time when you play against like Jade Druid, the way you win, you just burst them down. And if they have like a gigantic Jade to just like push that win condition even further with a card like this. So it's really quite strong. I have Air Elemental, Shaman card, one cost two one, it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. It's a really, really powerful card. Um, the one drop power level is kind of going down a bit with Tunnel Trog and a few of the other stuff getting left out of the game. So um, this is probably on par with some of the best one drops that you'll encounter. Uh, it's mostly weak to like rogue and like ping effects. There's a few of those, but I think it'll be pretty strong in elemental decks. Volatile Elemental, two cost one one, death rattle, deal three damage to a random enemy minion. Um, that's pretty good. I like it. They could have made it a really stupid RNG card by 3 damage to a random enemy, but it's a random enemy minion, so not bad. Primordial Glyph. So you have to keep in mind of the mage quest when you're looking at this card. So if you're just looking at the card, you're like, yeah, it's okay. You know, generally you'll get a pretty useful discover, but not always, and that might not be worth the risk. But uh, yeah, uh, in this case, you're getting a spell that's not originally in your deck, and you can Primordial Glyph another Primordial Glyph. You can actually essentially um, play six spells not originally in your deck on turn two by cycling this five times into another spell at the end of the chain. And that alone makes it have a guaranteed spot in that deck. And it's also probably a pretty decent card on top of that. Fireplume Harbinger, uh, 2 for 1-1, one, one, and Battlecry reduces the cost of elementals in your hand by 1. Uh, are Mage Elemental decks going to see play? Maybe. You know, Mage still has a lot of its control archetypes. Mage is getting, like, the new quest archetype, and I don't know how well that meshes with Elemental archetype. So, again, it's kind of like the Hunter issue where it seems like there's a lot of good cards, but they're in different categories, and it's very difficult to use them all together. So... Certainly not all of those categories are going to be successful, and maybe Elementals will be good in Mage, and maybe this card will be really good as a result of that, but it's far too many unknowns. At the end, we'll just have to play the expansion and see how these all will work together and how the meta will develop. More Elementals, 3 cost, 2-3. Uh, Death Rattle, add 2, 1, 2 Elementals to your hand. Uh, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll see some play in the Hunter quest deck, because you get like a 3-drop when you start running out of cards, but then you get 2 1-drops from the 3-drop, so that's pretty strong. I like the card for that, and maybe a few other, um, you know, decks that really rely on playing Elementals constantly. Shimmering Tempest, again, keep in mind the quest, 2 cost, 2-1, two, is uh, fairly poor stats. Those are like 1-drop stats, but the Death Rattle is basically kind of like about as good as draw a card. And it's an elemental, so that's a pretty damn good card. 
Storm Watcher, 7 cost 4, 8 Elemental with Wind Fury. Uh, it looks like a lot stronger than you might think. Uh, I mean, we had Wind Fury Harpy. Wind Fury Harpy, um, it's like a 4, 5 for 6. This is uh, two, uh, 3 extra health for 1 more mana. So yeah, it's like a little better than that. But uh, keep in mind, Wind Fury Harpy was like gigantic turd. So eh, I don't think we'll see too much of this card. But uh, every now and then you're going to see it stop someone in Arena. And uh, hopefully that someone is not me. Hot Spring Guardian, uh, one of the best design cards of the set. Shaman card, 2-4 two, two, with Taunt. And it's an Elemental. And you restore 3 health. So Shaman has a lot of health restoring from this set. It had a lot of health restoration from previous sets. Looks like a control-based Elemental Shaman is going to be a thing. And I think this card is going to help that deck thrive uh, quite a lot. Frozen Crusher, 6 cost, 8, 8 elemental after this minion attacks, freeze it. So um, if something is frozen uh, during uh, the attack phase, it doesn't unfreeze until the next next turn. So basically this attacks every two turns. Uh, 6 for an 8, 8 is not really anything crazy. I'm surprised this card it has a, a rare uh, gem on it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's worthy of it being a rare, but yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll have a few fun times in Arena. More Shaman cards with heal, Tidal Surge, deal 4 damage to a minion, cannot go face, very important, like that design a lot, and restore 4 health to your hero. Um, cool card, very good. Fireplume Phoenix, 4 cost 3-3, three, three, neutral elemental, Battlecry deals 2 damage. Uh, that's alright, uh, I mean, I have to compare it probably to the, the big rifleman, the 5 cost 4-2, that deals 2 damage. It's about as good as that, but costs one less mana, and it's an elemental. So you have to imagine it's a pretty decent card, at least comparatively. <sighs> God. Seriously, man, seriously. So you might look at this card and it's like, oh, 15 damage, I'll probably just overkill something. And yeah, you're probably right. But, um, you know, me being someone who's played a lot of arena, a lot of mage arena... Um, this card is generally going to do what Flame Strike does most of the time. So most of the time when you play Flame Strike, you get like a two, two and a half, maybe three for one, and it usually involves killing like a prized minion. So this card is about as good as Flame Strike. It kind of does the same thing if you need it to, and it costs one less mana. However, if you need it to do something else, like kill a gigantic minion, uh, well, it can do that as well. If you wanted to kill a gigantic minion along with a few other small ones, it can do that as well. Uh, and again, it does that at a big discount. Even even cards like Polymorph, right? Like when you when you play Polymorph, often you just do Polymorph ping. Like that's six mana, right? This, this kind of like Polymorph, still six mana, and just kills the things on the side as well. So, all right. I like this because it's a card that makes people once again think about the positioning involved, and positioning is part of the strategy of the game that was not really relevant for a few years now. But at the same time, the card is just so obscenely powerful, and it's a spell, and it's a mage spell. Out of all the different classes that could have got Meteor, it had to be mage. Um, it's, it's just clearly a busted card. Like, Explosive Shot is not a bad card in Arena. It's actually pretty good. You can play it in some constructed control decks. So, you know, compare this to Explosive Shot. Yeah, it costs one more mana, but let's see. It does triple the single target damage and 50% uh, more on the adjacent ones. Yeah, so, like, obviously this card is slightly better than Explosive Shot. Uh, and, yeah, Mage Spells, great. Primal Fin Champion. Um, I didn't think this card was that good. Uh, two cost, one, two, Murloc. Death Rattle returns any spells you cast on this minion to your hand. Um... Yeah, it's interesting. It doesn't look very good, honestly. I, I, I look at this card and I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know. I guess you play the Pally Quest to play, uh, I think it's six cards that buff your minions. Um, yeah, it doesn't look that good. But then I saw it on stream today and it had like seven buffs and then it made the quest activate on turn six and then the quest activating on turn six instantaneously won the game. So... Looks like this card's actually way better than it seems, but how much better? We'll have to play it out and see. Adaption, uh, very important towards the Paladin quest. It's also just a pretty good card. Uh, it's a high tempo uh, buff, so pretty good. 
I guess. We'll have to see. Um, a lot of these buffs, I just I look at them and I, I try to evaluate the value of playing them on a guy. So you know, if you do like hero power and then this, you can get like a four one, you can get a one four, um, you can get a two two for three, you can get a poisonous one one. A lot of those are okay. They're really okay. So I think this card is pretty good. Devil sore egg. Oh, it's kind of like the old Nerubian, but it's got more health, which is kind of worse against other board clears. It's better if you have buffs. Um, and the Death Rail is a lot stronger, but again, I have to imagine there's going to be a lot more people running silences and stuff. So a lot of pluses, a lot of minuses. Uh, I feel like the card is probably going to see play in the, um, the buff Paladin, but other than that, it seems a bit weak. The Vorax. 4 cost 3-3, three, three. after you cast a spell on this minion, summon a 1-1 one, one plant and cast a copy on that. So pretty good with the Paladin quest, I imagine. It's one of those cards that's like automatic, please, you have to remove this this turn or you're going to die, uh, if, at least if you're playing against those type of decks. Uh, how good are those type of decks going to be? I imagine pretty good. I imagine this card is going to be solid in that deck, so I think you're going to see a number of these. Um, it's a lot different than Genie. With Genie, you kind of... Um, okay, so like if you play this and then and then you buff this, yes, you, you get double the buffs and it costs less than a Genie and it's potentially more broken because there's going to be a deck out there that's just full of buffs. But when you used to play Genie, you used to play Genie and then buff a minion that was actually active. So your buffs had immediate tempo value. Or... If you're playing this and then you're playing buffs on this, then they won't have that immediate tempo value. So I don't think it's going to be totally busted, and I don't think it's going to see much play outside of the buff deck, but there probably is going to be that buff deck, so we're going to see some of this card still. Molten Reflection, 4 cost mage spell, choose a friendly minion, summon a copy of it. Extremely powerful. Uh, I mean, just playing it with like a 5 drop and then playing that is, is pretty damn strong just by itself. If you ever play a minion and it survives the turn and it's like very expensive play that and then whoa once again extremely high tempo extremely powerful mage spell uh things will be pretty good in arena but in arena you're going to need a decent balance because there's so many people running removal you're going to need a decent amount of high quality minions that this would actually be playable on otherwise you might draw dead and lose the game so it's a little bit of of a mix in arena like a feeling constructed if you design a deck um this will just be consistently pretty good but in arena it's going to be like extremely like game winning powerful and then complete crap in other cases so the range in arena is going to be a lot higher and um, still a pretty powerful card and then uh, in the second set they revealed the the cards on facebook i thought most of these would be just absolute crap pack fillers but they really weren't they're pretty good uh vine cleaver um i believe that's a paladin weapon no, the yellow border seven cost weapon though 4-3 after you attack, summon 2 one, one silver hand recruits. So um, with weapons, I like to evaluate them because there's going to be a lot of weapon removal in every meta moving forward. I like to evaluate them, you know, if you just play the weapon and attack with it once, how good is that? So uh, you do 4 damage, you take some damage, but maybe that's not too important, and you get 2 one ones. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I mean, that's, that's kind of like 5 mana, maybe 6 mana worth of stuff. If you attack a second time... It's obviously amazing. If you attack all three times, well, that's a ridiculous card. So we'll have to see how it works out and how many people are running weapon removal. Then we have this. Um, it has like a border, but it's really faint. I have to think it's a rogue card, but the border being so faint might suggest it's a neutral card. I don't know. Cost one less for each card you've played from another class. Again, I imagine it's a rogue card, and it being a rogue card, it's probably just okay. Um, I mean, yeah, you can get the cost down to zero, and that deck that tries to get stuff from other classes kind of needs tempo boosts, and that might be pretty good, but until you can get a decent amount of healing as well when you're like down on tempo and suffer a lot of damage, a weapon won't really be that useful because health is just such a prized resource in that type of deck. We'll see. Sated Threshadon, 7 cost 5, 7 Beast, Death Rattle, summon 3, 1, 1 Murlocs. Uh, pretty decent arena card. These, these cards are just not on a good enough power level for Constructed, so... 
Stampede, one cost, Hunter card. When you play a beast this turn, add a random beast to your hand. So, pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Um, I have no idea what deck this would work out in, so for now I'll just call it a decent arena card. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. There's just so many different things Hunter can do. Hopefully some of them catch, and hopefully those are not the aggro varieties, though probably they will be because of the Hunter quest. Egg Napper, 3 cost, 3 1, Death Rattle Summon, 2 1 1 Raptors. Uh, really powerful card against um, classes that don't have a lot of pings or like low damage board clears. Um, but still, again, probably just an arena card in the end of the day. Feeding Time, 5 cost, deal 3 damage to a minion, summon 3 1 1 Pterodaxes. Now well, that's. That's kind of like the expected result of an implosion. Implosion was just an absolutely broken card, but the implosions were also imps, which were demons, and that was relevant in some cases. So, uh, not 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 as good as implosion, but yeah, implosion was five mana. Would you play it? Yeah, you might. It's okay. It's an okay card. I think it's I think it's probably not good enough to see constructed play, but who knows? Hallucination, one cost rogue card. Discover a card from your opponent's class. Sure. Go to Narina, I guess. You're going to get some very powerful legendaries a lot of the time. Ultrasaur. I mean, you kind of call it a pack filler, but it kind of looks pretty interesting, honestly. Like, if you're playing Arena, getting a 7-14, like, that's much better than most of, like, the 8, 9, and 10 drops you'll generally get because it'll trade with two of them. At the same time, the adaptations are going to make it so it might just die to a poisonous. So... Uh, it looks like a pack filler, but it might be a little bit more interesting than that. Humongous Razor Leaf. Really like this card. Uh, it's one of these cannot attack minions, uh, but it's just so well statted. Like, 3 cost 4, 8. So good with taunt activations. So good in the Silence Purify Priest. Um, yeah, I think it might actually be good enough to see play in Constructed. Uh, though in Arena, I don't know if it's going to be consistent enough that you can actually activate the card but uh, in constructed like if you're playing silence purify priest the silence is going to be more useful than ever this card is really insane if you can you know get a grasp of it it's pretty good in control warlock hmm. a lot of different possibilities next up razor petal volley two cost add two razor petals to your hand that deal one damage i don't know what razor petals are but for this card to actually be really good they would have to be moon fires if they're moon fires this card is really good um, if they're like one mana deal one damage, that's kind of crappy, but, uh, we'll see. I think they are moon fires. I think this card is going to see uh, a lot of play. Blood boom. Your next spell this turn cost health instead of mana. So, uh, pretty insane warlock spells. Um, warlocks kind of have this, uh, attribute to them where you have cards that are just obscenely powerful, but very situational. This is exactly that. Um, so you lose a card to tempo out with another card. So, um, you know, you have to think about it like, you know, if you, if you innervate something, you lose a card and you gain a two man advantage. So, uh, this, this costs two mana. So, um, it's kind of like four cost innervate and you lose life, but it can be like totally insane. You can like doom for two mana, right? So I don't know. This is absolutely wild card um i really like experimenting with these but i have a feeling at the end of the day it's probably going to be a bit too clunky for the high power consistent decks out there and venom weapon uh rogue card give your weapon poisonous uh it's actually really good a lot of the time in the early and mid game as a rogue you're just using your weapon to gain tempo advantage and i mean this is kind of like just for three mana, you, you're you going to take some damage extra, but you remove whatever you want, and on turn four, you have a poison weapon, right? It's, like, really, really good. Um, that's, like, pretty good to play in Constructed if a lot of people are playing mid-range or control decks even, and it's certainly absolutely crazy in Arena. So, this is a good card. Steam, Surger, four cost, five, four, Elemental, and if you play Elemental on last turn, you add a Flame Geyser. The Flame Geyser is the crappy... Uh, mage spell, uh, two damage for two, and you put a one-two elemental in your hand. It's just like a pretty good card, and it'll help you chain more elementals if you're already chaining elementals, which is kind of the theme of these things. Pterodax Hatchling, three cost, two, two, uh, beast adapt. Um, a typical adaption is like plus one, plus one. So the card's just 
standard, pretty damn good. Uh, probably not good enough for constructed and pretty damn good for arena, as you would expect. Giant Mastodon. Again, not exactly a pack filler. Obviously, the pack filler for constructed, but for arena, these cards have a really big impact. Uh, it's a little bit worse than Bog Creeper, but in cases where you can consistently make to turn nine, um, the decks in arena that have the bigger, bigger minions tend to actually win against uh, each other. So um, you, know, you, you can't just have an arena deck filled with just gigantic minions all the time. You're gonna just lose constantly to tempo and aggro decks. So you can only have like just a handful of big minions. Um, and in the aggro matchup, it doesn't really matter. And in the control matchup, having big minions that are just slightly bigger than your opponent's big minions is actually a win condition. So this card um, is going to help you get there and is going to have a decent impact in the arena game. One that I think is uh, pretty dynamic and interesting. Vicious Fledgling, 3 cost, 3-3 three, three beast. After this minion attacks a hero, adapt. Turn three, you can be attacking heroes. Uh, it could be just a really scary card. Um, yeah, not bad. You can get like Wind Fury, attack a second time. Actually, that sounds completely insane. I was actually just gonna skip over this card, but this card is a must kill three cost card, isn't it? Because if, if you play it and your opponent doesn't have an answer, you attack his face. If you get Wind Fury, you can actually retroactively attack a second time. You attack a second time and then get like stealth. Oh my god, right? Uh, that's a scary little shit. Alright, I like that. Bright Eyed Scout, 4 cost 3, 4, Battle Cry, draw a card, change the cost to 5. Uh, I think this card is really powerful. Um, you have to think about it like a lot of people were playing um, what's it called? Gnomish Inventor. So Gnomish Inventor is less stats than that. And a lot of the time in the decks that run cards like four mana card draw, you're really just looking to curve out into your late game win condition. So if your late game win condition involves late game, then the card is insane because your late game can come out a lot sooner if it triggers on that late game piece. But in a lot of cases, like, again, decks that run cards like Gnomish Inventor are pretty clunky decks. So um, if... If you're playing those decks, you're often playing a 3-drop on turn 5. You're often playing a 2-drop on turn 5. You're often playing a 4-drop on turn 5. So in all those cases, if, if, if you're getting like a disadvantage from that draw, uh, that might just be fine. Um, I think most of the time it will be fine. And then on the high end, when your win condition or your late game has a really big discount, then you're going to be in extremely good shape. Also, you can play this on turn 9 and 10, and again, you can have a very similar effect, because again, those decks are generally a bit clunky. So this is going to be a very useful card. Razor Petal Lasher, 2 cost, 2-2, two, two, Battle Cry, add, add Razor Petal to your hand that deals 1 damage. Again, if it's like a Moonfire thing, uh, this card is really, really powerful and uh, staple in Arena. Sabertooth Stalker. Uh, 6 cost, 8-2, Beast with Stealth. Uh, pretty good. There's going to be a lot of taunt cards. There's a decent number of board clears that do 2 damage out of Stealth, so it's probably not that good in Constructed, but in Arena it is going to be very good, I imagine. Tar Lurker, 5 cost, 1-7, Taunt, and 3 attack on your opponent's turn. So it's 5 for a 4-7 Elemental Taunt on your opponent's turn. That's That's good. It's probably quite good for Arena, but I don't know if it's constructed, constructed level of powerful. Uh, I thought it might be, but then I saw like another card we'll get to here in a moment. Sun Genesis, uh, Warrior Epic, 5 cost, summon copies of your damaged minions. Hmm. Pretty insane, right? Uh, obviously, really insane in a control deck. It has a bit of negative synergy because if you're playing the control matchups, a lot of the time players will have like huge board clears and you kind of just force your opponent to use it. But if you just have like one really powerful legendary guy and you just use this to double up on your really powerful legendary guy, that might just be pretty good. We also have more combos with whirlwind effects and uh, Warriors are already having a lot of whirlwind effects, the new legendary and all that. It seems like there's going to be a lot of synergy to play similar cards like these together. Biteweed. 2 for a 1-1 one, one, combo plus 1 plus 1 for each card you played this turn. Um, kind of like a shitty Van Cleef, but Van Cleef is not shitty at all. So this card is probably pretty good, but again, I don't know if you'd play it in that deck. 
And I don't know what other deck he played in, so it might just be a bit of a misfit card. Emerald Hive Queen, one cost, two, three beast. Your minions cost two more. Uh, I, I really like this card. Uh, it's going to be really good in control decks, particularly ones that have a spell uh, emphasis, like a lot of the a lot of the mage, a lot of the mage stuff. I think it's going to be control deck with spell emphasis, so this works very well with that. It's the classic one drop with two, three. That's just super powerful. And it's also very important to realize that um, it can't really be played in aggro decks. So well designed. Charged Devil Soar, 8 cost, 7-7, seven, seven, Beast with Charge, Battlecry, Camp Tech, Heroes this turn. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good because if you play it, you just crush like maybe like a Taunt if it has low attack, high health. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's probably not good enough for Constructed, but uh, certainly a very good card in Arena. Rockpool Hunter, another Murloc that was revealed. 2 for a 2-3, which is just standard strong. And the Battlecry gives a friendly Murloc, plus 1, plus 1. The friendly tag makes it also a very good card for Arena. Um, if it was give uh, a Murloc, plus 1, plus 1, that would be problematic because in many cases your opponent would have a Murloc on the board and be forced to buff it, which would make the card suck. But as it stands, this is just a very powerful 2-drop, and it will, help, it will help Murloc decks kind of function. And uh, yeah... I guess I guess that's good. I don't know. I don't really want to get Zerg down my Murlocs constantly. So hopefully it doesn't help him out too much, but we'll see. Uh, this is the card I was talking about. I think this card is uh, pretty crazy, right? Like, it's a 5 cost, 4, 7, even on your turn. That's really good stats. It's a beast. That can be relevant. And if you control at least two other minions, you gain taunt. But 5 cost, 4, 7, taunt. And is a beast. Uh, that's that's really powerful. Um, it's it's like maybe even constructed good, but it's a common neutral. So you better enjoy playing against this card in arena. This is going to shape the arena meta quite a bit. Um, so much so that I think cards with five or more health. So they can attack into this and not die are going to be fairly valuable, especially big ones with seven attack. So we'll have to see. Emerald Reaver, one cost, two, one beast. Battle card deal one damage to each hero. I think this is a pretty decent card to play in the Hunter Quest deck. Other than that, probably a bit too weak. Iron Hide, one cost, gain five armor. Um, I think this card sucks, but often I have underestimated the armor and health gain cards that Warriors have had in the past. I still think it sucks, but whatever. I'll probably be wrong. Chittering Tunneler, 3 cost, 3-3, three, three, Beast, Warlock card, Battlecry, Discover a spell, deal damage to your hero equal to its cost. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. That looks like Warlocks are getting a bit too masochistic these days. Uh, seems like a good card, but yeah, I don't know. Can't take that much damage all the time, right? I don't know. Bitterhide, Hydra, 5 cost, 8, 8, Beast, when this minion takes damage, deal 3 damage to your hero. I kind of see this as kind of like the, the Fell Reaver of the set. Fell Reaver is really powerful in GBG. People are playing aggro decks, and they just have a bunch of early game. They drop the Fell Reaver on turn 5 or 4 if they had like a Mech Warper in play. That was kind of like a game-winning scenario. Um, this is very similar to that, but... Yeah, I just, I just think the game has power crept from that quite a bit, and this is just not going to work anymore. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's a bit of a risk to run this in Arena. We'll see. Cruel Dynamancer, 6 cost, 5-5. Five, five. Death Rattle, summon a random minion you discarded this game. So, pretty interesting stuff. Um, the, the main thing that I think about when I see this card is if somehow you can discard itself, it'll just keep summoning itself constantly. So if hypothetically, if you had like, you know, a control deck and you had just a bunch of control spells, two of these and a Nazoth, and you cycled this on itself uh, like six times and you play Nazoth, then you just get another like six of these and then those die and then, uh, and, you know, those can't be removed again. It seems like some really, really wild stuff. And uh, I'll have some fun with this one. And that'll do it. So overall, we see that this set has very, very few pack fillers. It has some design that encourages people to 
play decks from the ground up with the new quest systems. Um, we see a lot of really good things about the set. Some of the bad stuff though, uh, the set is going to be the most expensive one to date with uh, every class having multiple legendaries with uh, packs costing more for a lot of different regions and with the kind of hidden necessity of people just having to buy packs to compete because it seems like most of these cards are on a much higher power level than the previous expansion. Uh, from what I've seen, I believe that the only deck type that'll probably survive from previous expansion is the Jade deck type. Other than that, I think the decks are generally outclassed or have to be significantly improved with cards from the new Angoro set. So um, kind of just have to buy a lot of packs and it's going to be really hard to get all the cards you want because there are a lot of high rarity cards. Also, yeah, touched on that. Power creep is pretty real in this um, in this expansion. It's not direct power creep, but just the power level of the average card seems a lot higher. But again, at the same time, cards seem a bit more situational. So um, if you're going to power creep your game, I think this is a good way to do it. And I think the power creep has a pretty level playing field. Like, I can't say like, yeah, definitely mage is the best. Yeah, mage might actually be the best, but it's it's not it's not like obvious where in other sets you kind of got a lot of that so it seems pretty good it seems like we're going to have a lot of fun in the upcoming expansion and even though there are some negative things that uh, are coming from this set uh, it seems like they're kind of done in just about the best way possible so that might just be pretty good. I have to say that after today's card reveal, usually I expect just the absolute crappers, the pack fillers, just the dumpster broken cards on the last day. And there was like very little slash none of that. So I've actually gained quite a lot of optimism for the new set and uh, I very much look forward to playing it. So hope you guys share my experience. Hope you guys enjoyed my review once again, and it was a lengthy one, but uh, I hope it was worth it for you, and I hope you tune in videos tomorrow.